Hello everyone. Welcome to Digital Communication Tutorials. In this video, I am going to take up the ninth numerical on sampling theorem. I will read out the question first. A low pass signal has the spectrum given by G of F equals 1 minus magnitude of F for magnitude of F less than 1 and 0 for magnitude of F greater than 1. Assume that G of T is sampled at 1.5 Hz and then apply to a low pass reconstruction filter with cutoff frequency at 1 Hz. Plot the spectrum of the resulting signal. Let us start with the solution part. I will write down the given equation once again. Now from the look of the equation here, let me call it as equation 1, we understand that the given signal G of T is a strictly band limited signal. We can very easily plot the spectrum of G of T using the equation 1 which I will be writing now. Let me start with the x axis which is the frequency axis. I will then draw the y axis here and this will be g of f. Now if you look at the equation 1, you will understand from the first part of the equation that is for magnitude of f less than 1, you see that as the frequency increases from 0 towards 1, the value of 1 minus magnitude of f will keep on decreasing. Therefore, let me start at f is equals to 0. At f is equals to 0, g of f is equals to 1. So, I will mark it here as 1. And as I increase the frequency, 1 minus magnitude of f slowly reduces and the last value of the frequency is 1 itself. So, the spectra for the positive values of f would look like this. In a very similar fashion, because it is given the magnitude of f, the negative values of the frequencies will also have a very similar response. So, this will be 0, this is plus 1 and this is minus 1. This is the spectra of the given signal G of T. Now, if you go back to the question and read out, we are told G of T is sampled at 1.5 hertz. Let us now first perform the sampling. We know that the sampled signal spectra is given by the expression g delta of f is equals to fs summation n varying from minus infinity to plus infinity g of f minus n fs. Here it is given that fs is equals to 1.5 hertz. So, let me call this as equation 2 and substitute fs equals to 1.5 hertz into equation 2. Therefore, g delta of f is equals to 1.5 into summation n varying from minus infinity to plus infinity g of f minus 1.5 n. Let me call this as equation 3. Now, as per the ideal low pass sampling theorem, the process of sampling will create replicas of the original spectra once the original signal is sampled. This is illustrated by the diagram here. Let me start with the x axis. This is the frequency axis. Let me draw the y axis now. This will be g delta of f. Let me plot the original spectra first. This is exactly the same as what I have shown here. There will be a change in the scale. I would like you to note that. Coming back, now let us create replicas of the same. What is important here is to note that the sampling frequency given is 1.5 hertz. So, I will write here fs equals to 1.5 hertz. So, I have to shift this spectra left as well as right n number of times by the value of frequency equal to 1.5 hertz. Right. This is how the spectra of the sampled signal would look like. 
However, please note this is not exactly the shape of the sample signal spectra. It would look something like this due to the spectral overlapping. Right. So, this is how the spectra of the original sample signal would look like. I have highlighted using a thick sketch and that would be the shape of the sampled signal spectra. Now, let us go back to the numerical and see we are told that this sample signal spectra is, is applied to a low pass reconstruction filter with a cutoff frequency at 1 hertz. Let me now plot the amplitude response of the reconstruction filter. This is H of F. Now, as per the ideal sampling theorem, we know that the reconstruction filter is designed to have a cutoff frequency of W. And for our given numerical, the signal has the highest frequency component of W equals to 1. Therefore, the ideal reconstruction filter response would look like this. Right. So, this value is 1 divided by Fs. Now, when you come back to the sample signal spectra diagram and you try to pass this frequency response through the ideal reconstruction filter response, what will remain at the output is given here. Right. This is how the spectra of the sampled signal would look like after it is being passed through a low pass reconstruction filter with a cutoff frequency of 1. So, if I come back to the numerical, we have plotted the spectra of the given signal, then we plotted the spectra of the sampled signal and then we passed the sampled signal spectra through a low pass reconstruction filter and finally, we have plotted the spectra after it is being passed through the reconstruction filter. As a conclusion, I would now like to say that it is not possible to reconstruct the original signal spectra from the sampled signal spectra because the sampled signal spectra illustrates aliasing effect. Why it does illustrate aliasing effect is because of the condition that the value of Fs considered here is less than 2W. Why? Because if you just go back to the spectra of the input signal, you see that the highest frequency component is 1, which is our W. And for a proper and complete reconstruction of the original signal at the output, we must perform a sampling where the value of Fs at least equal to 2W. But for this numerical, we are told the value of Fs is 1.5 Hz. The minimum value of Fs should have been 2 Hz, but for this numerical, the value of Fs is 1.5 Hz and therefore, this causes aliasing. That is why we say that reconstruction of the original signal is not possible from the sampled signal. Right. Lastly, before I conclude, let me call the output of the filter as G dash of F, where G dash represents the estimate of the original signal G of F. Right. That's it about this numerical. If you like this video, kindly like and share this video and subscribe to my channel for more videos on digital communication. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.